Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO The Lost Days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Malcolm Lover. But right now, we gotta talk about drawing the sword, newspapers, delivery, the carrying of assistance of America's packages, bills, letters to their loved ones, and more across the entirety of the U.S. A simple yet wondrous example towards the brilliance housed within the possibility of the individual workmen within the economic system of the country. Workmen were cheap. The President of the United States fought day and night for, and yet as he stared at the newspaper in his hands, he witnessed how all of these newspaper delivery workers spread the decrying message of the defiance of his former support. Everywhere Harrington looked, whether it was the large graphics of maps detailing political shifts, or the articles describing the spiteful protests throughout the nation against the presidential administration, he saw a nation of reluctance crouched behind an array of heart-piercing defenses, sensitive to even the slightest bit of change in Harrington's mind. The South had solidified the antagonistic approach to the administration as a wave of what the critics in opposition call exhaustion had moved the Rockies to change. Yet, even so, the venomous trail continues to see forward as a baseless claim of frustration has begun to sprout throughout the Pacific and Midwest more and more. As the president continued to flip the pages, the bruises to his self-conscious continued to ride his mind, causing him to relieve the, uh, relive the feelings of the TV broadcast from so long ago. The feelings of loss, of betrayal, suddenly, as Harrington walked behind his desk, essential f essentially falling into his desk chair, a rush of more memories flooded his mind once more. This time, not with the icy feelings of the betrayal of his constituents, but the, of the warm connection he shared with them. Those countless hours he spent meeting up with dozens, if not hundreds, of workers across the U.S. of A., all in a desperate need of care and concern that Washington was not willing to provide for the hardworking support of the American government economy. No. They preferred to cut the NPP apart, leave the power to the left, who are organizing riots as we speak, and the Yaquis who are going to be tearing the Constitution apart of the second they get close to it. The president brought, or brought his palms to his face, trying to wipe the anger and frustration from within him, his eyes becoming fixated on a particular part of one of the articles in the corner of the page. The name was one of the most beautiful cities in the U.S., the gateway to the West, St. Louis, Missouri, engulfed in street brawls between far-right and progressives. They even got home. All support in the South has become disillusioned. Many in the Rock has become disillusioned. The North has become disillusioned. Legislative support for the agenda falls, and the MPP grows to further divided. It is what it is. Are we going to stop? Nope. We're going all the way with Michael Harrington still. Um, hopefully we keep getting passing some more votes. I mean, there's only one far right there, so it doesn't really matter too much. So they are near their breaking point right now, which sucks. Which is really, really bad. The middle class hates us. The bourgeoisie hates us. The working class dislikes us, which is not great, but, you know, it is what it is. Reassure the middle class. Fatigue will be decreased by 10. Um, at this point, I mean, we're just trying to solve wave, wage poverty. So maybe we'll do some systematic inequalities. Highly polarizing gesture. Improve relations between us and a lot of people. Um, you know what? Let's give it a slight break. Oh, Duce's disaster. Mussolini has been dead for over a decade, but the father of fascism is still giving us more trouble than any dead man except Adolf Hitler. Siano's mismanagement of foreign policy in the Italian Empire, the turmoil stirred up by the transition to a democracy, and the incompetence of the Italian colonial administration has led to an explosion of chaos in the Middle East. This would not be our first concern except for two reasons. First, Italy is an extremely valuable ally with a vast influence over the Mediterranean, a powerful military and economic ties to us both and our allies. Second, Italy's empire is one of the world's largest producers of oil, and the collapse of the colonial governments has dramatically destabilized the oil market. Both of these are reason enough to intervene. The only question is the nature of what type of intervention should we do? Just because, uh, we may, we may give a slight break from this. Slight break, maybe. We'll see. Keep getting us that pee pee. When in doubt, pee pee comes out. Um, no. That wouldn't be worth it. Reduce the influence of the working class would be good to do, because they're at 57. The bourgeoisie is at uh, 56. A working class, it would be better if they actually liked us. So... But the other America likes us. I want to reassure them, but still. Influence will go up, but fatigue will decrease. I, we gotta we gotta reduce fatigue, man. At this point, we've really gotta reduce fatigue somehow. Um Influence of the middle class will go up. Fatigue by five, that's not enough. This is better to do. Uh screw it, we'll do it once. Less fatigue. We just gotta get less fatigue, man. And then I'm uh I might suppress them some more. So this is gonna go up more, which sucks. But it should be okay, right? Let's do El Duce's Disaster. Uh, we're doing that route just because we get more political power, too. Because I want to do a company man? No. The Naples Conference? We grow further divided. Honestly, I think we're already pretty good. We need that political power, really. So, this is what hurts other people, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, we, we just need some political power, man. The center of rises. We might come back to that, maybe. Systematic inequalities. I mean, I... Oh, intensify persuasion efforts. Uh, where are we at? They're at... 56. Well, that, 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 we did not complete yet. Dang it. 
Um, I'm going to read about this one at least. The specter of racial inequality still haunts our nation, exercising it will unfortunately require a lot more than simply declaring all men to be created equal. The specter is a lot more subtle than many may think. Many ethnic minorities face repression at every level of society, from the obvious hurling of racial epithets right down to being merely overlooked for unemployment, denied places at university, and otherwise marginalized all account on the race. We must root out the problem from every nook and cranny of our society. The only America we will ever be made a more perfect union is if we ensure that even the most suitable of racial offenses are squashed. Everyone deserves a chance and all deserve to live a life free from obstacles brought on by the circumstances of their birth. Pretty much. Pretty much. So their influential is significant. That's not bad. Um, you know, screw it. We're gonna go this way, maybe. We'll do that one first. Screw it. We'll do that one. Be a little more influential. Cut down on their exhaustion. I want to do that one, but really, the company man, the Naples Conference. Oh, there's nothing here. We're gonna get that PP. We'll do the Naples Conference. Subsidize the Italians, bail out the ENI, bolster their forces, Schwarzkopf plans, which is very cool. The oil must flow. Like the she wolf that nurse Romulus and his stretcher's brother Remus, the U.S. has come to offer succor to Italy in its hour of need. Our newly diplomatic democratic ally, wracked by rebellion in the Middle East, has little hope of holding on to their oil rich colonial territory without the kind of help a superpower can provide. If Italy is to be able to reestablish her control over the region, not only will we be able to spread the offense influence, but we will have a limited less source of oil, ready to keep the lights on in the U.S. for, of course, decades to come. Because right now it's not, not looking too good for the OFM. However, just like about every issue these days, intervention in the Middle East has become a fiercely debated issue, with two camps forming in Congress. Those who advocate indirect intervention by supplying the Italians with funds, advisors, and material, and those who argue for direct military intervention, the RDs, for the most part support limited intervention. All the MPP argue to slam the brunt of the U.S. military down on the enemy, but support for either policy comes from both sides of the party line. The debate, consequently, is fierce at best and caustic at worst. Direct interventionists argue that the Italian military, combined with the full force of the U.S. in combat, is more than sufficient to defeat groups of ragtag desert guerrillas, and will ensure offense supremacy in the region for the foreseeable future. On the other side, it is suggested that, while perhaps not quite as effective, indirect intervention is more than enough to help Italy win the war on their own, and prevent thousands of American boys dying in the sand. God. America today. Anyways, with the memories of South Africa still fresh in the minds of every American, war in the Middle East could be a greatly polarizing issue. Whichever degree of intervention is chosen, we must carefully be careful to not get mired in a conflict we can't win. Honestly, if we go down that way, it's it would make more sense, I think. So we need that oil. We're going to we'll unify it. We'll get directly involved in the oil crisis. The fire rises. I mean, I like getting daily army XP, but checkmate send support to Italy. Um, peace in our time. We lose 100 political power there, which sucks. But we're, we're just going to go down this way a little bit. Play it safe, Italians can handle this, yeah. Usually, I'm the type of guy that says, we got to go all the way. We're going to go balls to the wall, sons and girls and boys and whoever. But, like... <clears throat> but for something like this right now, we, we got to cut things down, man. It's constantly bickering. Yeah, it is what it is. Still significant. Still significant. This sucks, man. This sucks. We're at, I mean, we should still be able to pass whatever we need. We should still be able to do that. I think USSR is back, though. It's a really cool flag. Tukhachevsky, looking like an old dude. Looking like a real old dude. That's all right. Sometimes we all have to get old, right? Sometimes, more like usually. All right, the Naples Conference. The President's Commission on Racial Inequality. A radical proposal. Um, is America ready for the step? Public fatigue? Oh, boy, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good for us. Systematic inequalities. Oh boy, I guess we're gonna go. We're gonna get that PP and just burn it immediately on lowering uh, fatigue. Probably. Ooh. Is there anything else here? Yeah. Why can't we get more PP, please? Our Democrats? Nope. Not today. Uh, toe down rhetoric. I'd like to do that. Fatigue goes down by ten. I mean, it's still significant. This is not good. I'm not going to favor the middle class. Help the other America out. Screw it. Help the other America out. A letter from Springfield, Massachusetts. Dear Mr. President, I suppose I should begin saying that I didn't vote for you. My family has been supporting Democrats, and then Republican Democrats for generations. We love them for nominating the Kennedys. My grandma called you a dirty red the first time she ever saw one of your advertisements. She called you an atheist and a bunch of other things. But last year, her husband, my grandpa, passed away. He had worked as a janitor in the Big Y headquarters for years and years. Grandma has always been worried about keeping the house she had been raised in it. But you know, now she gets his pension, benefits, and doesn't have to worry anymore. I don't think you'll ever have to admit it. She'd ever have to admit it, but I know you. I know that I'm grateful. So thank you, Mr. President. I'm glad you did what you did. Sincerely, Kevin Walsh. I want to do this one, but that's going to hurt. Oh, they already don't like us. So bad. 
All that matters, all that literally matters, is that we can get some more forms passed. L literally, the last one. I do not want to have to use consequence commands for this. Please, please, please. Uh, operation success. Oh, that was good. Good job, guys. Good job. It's only five. Five is not going to be enough to cut this down, though. I mean, we're, we're gonna, let's get some, some comments first before I say any other, anything else here. Um, ooh, Republicans. No. But someone says that CMPP is getting more popularity due to reforms, maybe. That is a good thing to bring up. Like, we're getting more senators because people actually like our reforms. That's totally a possibility. That's absolutely a possibility. Hmm. That's not good. The President's Commission on Racial Inequality. Presidential commissions have been utilized in the past to directly address a problem that the President uh, of the time wishes to solve. By attaching their name to a specific task force dedicated to a specific cause, the President can draw valuable public media attention to the area of issue and devote government resources to its resolution. Harrington intends to create such a commission to address the issue of racial inequality. This commission will investigate areas of interest across the country to better understand the ways in which ethnic minorities are unfairly treated, so we can figure out a plan of action going forward. We're not going to have enough support here, are we? Uh, how many Republicans are there? Two. Even if we got them all. Okay, seriously, get rid of these senators. Bro, that's not good enough. With our party, Social Democrats. So we get 100 people here, we still might be able to do it. The balancing tips. Look, Mr. President, as far as I can tell, I can fully sympathize with what you're doing. Harrington. Heard over the phone as the President continued to rub his forehead to ease his stresses. As far as I'm concerned, you're doing some of the best work this country has ever seen over the past few decades. However, that doesn't change the opinions of my constituents. And in time of crises, we have to adapt to the situation around us. It was an honor to serve alongside you and work together for the common man of America, but I must tell the line for the sake of my career. We'll see each other soon, President Harrington. The phone line cut soon before after or before Harrington had the chance to respond. The President sat back and leaned over his desk. Silent despite his vice, the President having been here to listen into the entire conversation. So, who was that, Mike? How asked one of the Senators of New York, another gone from the East Coast. He said in near monotone that Irving had not caught the strings of emotion inside of the President's anguish. Crap, Harrington stated, pushing away from his desk as the face grew redder by the minute. What the heck was I supposed to do, Hal? What the heck else? The President roused, making Irving more and more uncomfortable as he saw his friend descending into his anger. I'm sorry, Irving, to imagine them being so tired as I sit here steering the course of the nation, he said. Well, Mr. President, unfortunately, being tired and angry isn't going to solve the departure crisis we've seen with members of the CMPP or the growth of the Yawkeys across the South. Irving responded, How bad is the party looking at this point? Harrington asked, Well, the South is already out of the question. Every sympathetic man in the South has turned to the far right MPP, the Democrats are over to Yawkey. The Yawkeys, or Rockies, have slowed their defections, if only for the reason that there isn't any left on our side to switch over to the Republicans. Meanwhile, the very base of support you started out with New England, the Pacific, and the Midwest are all turning over for the first time. Irving said Harrington got it from his desk to pace around the Oval Office upon hearing the dreaded reports. Mike, walking around the darn office isn't going to get us, uh, isn't going to stop, help stop Gus Badward Hall from taking all of our support, Irving barked. Harrington froze up upon hearing his vice president, Gus Hall, the leader of the UF MPP, who helped promote and start the protests, riots, and brawls throughout the city streets? Americans already claimed that Harrington had only broken the party, broken a party of the part. However, now we can only help out whenever he had smashed the country into process. We need to take action now. 49? That's not good. Actually, wait, no, that's, not, that's okay. The far right center opposes it, the Republican supports it, and a Democrat supports it. That actually was okay. Look at. I thought we were 46 earlier. Maybe I was wrong, but that's enough. That's enough. We're going in, boys and girls. We're going all the way in. A radical proposal. The President's Commission on Racial Inequality has shown that systematic racism has rooted itself in society more firmly than we thought. Racial inequality is a self-reinforcing societal disease, and merely eliminating its illicit legal support is not n enough to cure it. Our civil rights law may say that a black man cannot be denied entry to Harvard just because of his race, yes. He may have well been denied cross or access to elite private education as youth due to poverty stemming from centuries of racial oppression while his white counterparts were not. Even with legal equality, the halls of power and privilege in America still bear implicit signs marked whites only, but only the PCRI has developed a radical solution to this problem. My apologies about this. Right, we just gotta get more PP. The PCRI has proposed that we move away from legal equality and towards social equity. Taking affirmative actions to raise their other America up to equal social standing with whites will offer them improved access to universities, jobs, and even promotions in the army. This will only be the this will be the only way to truly heal America's racial divide, but first we must embark on a campaign to sell the public on this proposal. The Welcome Report. 491 pages. 491 pages of charts, graphs, tables, and summaries. 
491 pages of interviews from across the country, from Oakland to Tunica to Columbia Point. 491 pages of history stretching from convict leasing to Birmingham bombings. 491 pages of broken promises, crushed dreams, and stolen wealth. 491 pages documenting the history of abuse, violence, and exploitation that America has subjected its black population to. And 491 pages documenting the impacts of that reign throughout the decades. It finished it in one night. Jesus Christ, that's a lot. The President Harrington intended to do that. It poured over the Wilkins Report, underlining things, scribbling in the margins. Sometimes his eyes alighted on a particular set of numbers, and he lost several minutes pondering every horror that these numbers implied. When his staff came into the Oval Office for the next morning's meeting, he dropped the report on his desk and jabbed it with a determined finger. This, this is a priority. Must do better. To hack to, with those who say we can't. Increased public fatigue at this point doesn't matter. Um, you know what? I'll save with you guys here. Uh, we could go, we could go weak willed, or we go balls to the wall, like I said. So, we're gonna lose that peepee. -pee. We're not gonna peepee -pee in time. Strike a deal. We're going all the way in, boys, and girls, and whoever else is here. We're going all the way. For the love of God, we better get this thing passed because we're screwed in the next elections. Well, maybe not. Maybe we'll see what happens. Popularity is god awful. Significant. Even the working class hates us. That's so stupid. I mean, I swear, like, sometimes, yeah, it makes sense for them to hate us, but it just feels like they just gotta hate us for, to hate us. Oh! Well, well, that was a waste of time. A pee-pee. My bad. One, two. Well, we should be able to do it, so. Introduce affirmative actions. Until such a time that inequality can be truly eliminated, one possible measure to ensure that those who face discrimination are no longer hindered by bias is simply to encourage discrimination in their favor. Affirmative action will encourage universities and businesses to actively take an ethnic minority candidate over a white one where the two candidates are matched in talent in other areas, all other regards. Or talent in all other regards. Many consider this proposal unforgivingly radical and highly unfair, simply calling it discrimination in the other direction. The president considers it a necessary system that in any case will only exist until racial bias is removed from the public consciousness, and all can truly be judged on their merits alone. For now, affirmative action will serve as a counterweight to the prejudice that is so deeply ingrained in American society. Ah, yes. Make people hate you more. But that's okay. We're getting past stuff anyways. The glass shatters. Oh. Nice, look at this. Harrington and Howe, with some of the best friends found within the American political sphere, now found themselves once more silently crossing one another in a mix of disgust and sorrow. In particular, Harrington had his eyes glued to the piece of paper that made his way to his desk. A political cartoon, a source of humor for some active within the divided political world of the U.S. of America. For others, such as the United States, all he saw was scorn and insults as it depicted a gross misrepresentation of him taking money from the blue-collar white workers in the South and throwing it into the bonfire door with a sign marked Welfare Program. The daily newspaper in Mississippi seems to have taken a lack into you, Mr. President, How said. What the heck do they do that for? I made these programs for Mervyn for screwing them. Just for them. Harrington said, tightening the grip in his hands, the Venice frustration is easy, Mr. President. It's because Yaki's taking control across the South, and as far as the far right loses membership every day, Yaki burns your work across the South. Even as Harrington listened on, he had read the reports, he had watched the news, heard of the people. Yaki may have been a dude, but that much is true. But, Hall was right on the other end of the spectrum, stealing away from the social democracy Harrington had built around himself to feed to his proletarian dreams. The MPP, the government, the whole darn country had been engulfed in this wildfire of partisanship and extremism. Irving, I have a question, Harrington asked in a tone mixed with resolve yet sorrow as the VP braced himself. Did I do all this? Is it really my fault? Harrington asked. Hearing the drastic question from the president, Howe took a long few minutes to think over the question. Howe knew that more than a superior, Harrington was his best friend. Someone who celebrated all their successes with him, and launched a platform into the spotlight. Someone who struggled with all their failures alongside him, and helped Irving get over all the obstacles they came up against. Michael, it doesn't matter whether it's your fault or not. It doesn't matter if it's really your fault. And the federal government has become a gridlock by all the chaos coming from it. What matters is that we fix this. We repair that what's been destroyed over the past few years, Irving said, patting his friend on the shoulder. Let's fix this together. The South becomes increasingly radicalized. Legislative support falls for our agenda. Wait. I said we were supposed to lose support. Then why did two Democrat supporters now, and we have 52 out of 63 of our senators? I love losing support. Wow. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Let's do it again sometime. Let, let's do it every time like that. Yeah, we lost support. We lost so much support that we got more. Like, bro. Dude. That's not bad. How, how badly have we shattered the MPP? On the verge of disaster. Nice. Finally, thank goodness. Working to eliminate poverty, my friends. The sickness has been treated. When a man is blighted with an infection, you must swab out the deepest of the diseased tissue to ensure that he might recover to walk again. So too, as Harrington worked tirelessly to address the many afflictions blighting a great nation. The blight of racial inequality, educational deficit, monetary exploitation, and unaffordable health care may not be entirely eliminated. But the treatment we have laid out should help these wounds to heal over time.
With these evils addressed, we can better fulfill the promise of our, four of our founders and ensure that every American may have the same foundations from which to make use of every opportunity our nation has to offer. No longer shall there be an other America but one America, united in equality, justice, and liberty. Well, we'll see what happens. Like, I, I guess, uh, like, I, no, it's just, it's weird, like, RFK was killed for trying to get radical civil rights. Or, you know, these good civil rights. But we've gone with Harrington. Revolutionary civil rights. We're going with affirmative action, and we're going to lose so much support here. You know, they said they're worried about Yaki. So, like, how do they know who, know who Yaki is? Like, honestly, like, I don't think... They might know him, but, like, they don't get that much support. I mean, look how much Gus Hall's been doing. We're going left, like, but we're getting more Gus Hall support, so... Voting on the AAA. When President Harrington was elected, not everyone freaked out. When he claimed that the sky or the sky of American politics had forever fallen. Some, even those in Congress, welcomed the administra administration openly. But even some of those stalwarts are getting a bit nervous about the vote on the Affirmative Action Act. It's controversial in every state. Conservative organizations have organized marches on capitals to protest its anti-American, anti-equality nature. Still, if the administration thought that it couldn't possibly pass, they never would have brought it to the Senate floor, right? The chair is filled with senators, lobbyists, journalists, and a few concerned citizens who have shown up to visibly support the position. Those in favor will say A, those opposed will say no. The clerk will now call roll, and so the vote begins, and the A's have it. We will significantly increase public fatigue. Remove affirmative action, increase the status of civil rights. Holy crap, affirmative action, of course. Uh, property slowly begins to improve as well, as well as academic base. So, 30%, yeah, not bad. Um, six hour workday, yeah. Someone said in the comments below, like, six hour workday, holy crap, that's, that's pretty nice. That's not bad. Did we already, I'm pretty sure we already had this here, so. Yeah. But hey, poverty is going to get even better, hopefully soon. Work to eliminate poverty in America for all. With the end of the second term drawing near, Harrington intends to once and for all define the legacy he shall leave to America. Over the last few years, the MPP has fought hard for racial equality and economic mobility for all Americans, and the president means to ensure this ethos is maintained past his time in office. And to this end, he intends to give one of his last speeches as president at the University of Chicago, where he studied long ago, as he gives his blessing to the graduating class of 72. He will inspire them, and hopefully all the young minds of America, with the promise of a better future that all should seek to strive for. Let's go to six triple A. No one was certain who had hired the bosses, but there were at least a dozen of them lined up outside the Supreme Court like crumb plated of siege, wag siege wagons. Siege weapons. Dan Rather walks along alongside them. Curious as to how it's all pulled off. But a few yards away, a crowd is gathering. Almost everyone is carrying a placard, and everyone is white. Starched shirts, khakis, and floral pattern day dresses dominate. Do your constitutional duty. We ride for liberty. AAA is fascism. He gets a few stares. Some people st gather at Texans. Maybe they owe their lives to this broadcast during uh, Carla. It's just like. Oh, my bad. It's uh, just as likely that they want to tear him apart, though. Now that the Supreme Court is taking up the question of the Affirmative Action uh, Act, Washington is being flooded by protesters. Journalists and lobbyists already play the part in this chapter of history. Let's go and grab that one. I don't care. Um, I forgot about that. We have uh, five, six, seven, eight quotas will discriminate. Um, how are we supposed to get five liberals here? Thurman made us get another one, but still, like, uh, we, we have secured 60, 36 votes outside our voting block for the next piece of legislation. Okay, salvages surround us. The static continued to emanate from the TV sets as President Harrington looked on with anger, loss, and exhaustion. Just as the entire ordeal had been put through for the past few months had exhausted him, the screams and cries of Americans across the country echoed a similar exhaustion. An exhaustion seemingly grew out of the peaceful change, stable economics, democracy, and logic that Harrington so desperately tried to move forward under his presidency. Rather, all that America could muster to show to the public was the hate inside their heads. Within the South, heck had broken out by the name of Francis Parker Yaki, which is... I'm sorry, but that's not that's not true. That's absolutely not true. Look at that. 1%, man. 1%. The seemingly compliant far right wing of the MPP dominated the South, had been drawn, quartered, and cannibalized by the extremists marching across the streets, advocating for the support of fascist influence to undo the decadence found within the system of government within the Republic, as one rally leader proclaimed in Georgia. The dudes marched up and down the roads, busy in intersections, anywhere and everywhere they could find attention to, and bring and brought havoc wherever they went, forcing the African American populations of the U.S. into hiding. Even the madman himself had gone up to the stage with Yaki announcing a podium and advocating that they must rescue the ideals of Western civilization as they decay with the growing disgust present in the world. Meanwhile, in the North, all who had remained to support Harrington were living in the shadow of a continuously growing name for the progressives of the U.S. Gus Hall. The communists seeking to duly overthrow the shackles of the U.S. government binds to the American worker, as a news reporter within the New York City had stated. Rallies displayed communist propaganda through the streets of the industrial North brought together the suffering workers that, alongside the unmoving political figures of Washington, Washington had to remain loyal to him after working so hard for him. The progress of the U.S. had become dominated by notions of extremism and anger, but even so, wasn't the rest of the country engulfed in the same fire? 
Everywhere President Harrington looked, he saw a nightmare of what was meant to be a country of freedoms. Now radicals occupied the streets as blood, tears, and ro fire rocked the governmental system, with the only thing moving forward at the time able to tell what the lied ahead. I'm not a prey man, but... Yeah, there's nothing you can literally do about this. Like, every single time I've done this, I've gone for the more liberal option. No matter who it was, so... Um, it, like, this, that's, that's BS. That's like, that's straight up BS. But yeah, like, don't tell me that the Yaki's are, like, getting together if you only have 1%. That literally makes no sense. It makes no sense. It makes maybe more sense if you had more strong Thurman support, but, like, Yaki? Really? You're trying to make him out to be a bad guy just to be a bad guy. There's no other support, man. Man, come on. The working class. I mean, that's disappointing. The working class. Come on, guys. Well, the other America. They love us. They're dominant. Um, we can reassure them. Favor them? No. No. Not anymore. We're done with them. White House, working class. We can reassure them, I guess. America for all. An end of poverty. If there's one legacy the future historians will attribute to President Harrington, it'll be the end of the curse of poverty afflicting the lives of American citizens, though it may still, still exist and continue to do so. Our citizens can rest assured that poverty is no longer a pill without escape, but a simple bump in the road on the path of the American dream. We'll all afford the right to health care in the times of illness, fun in times of need, uh, food in times of need, freedom from racial prejudice and ready to access to work and education ascending from the darkness shouldn't be a Sisyphean task any longer. A time approaches for a new president, but the efforts Harrington has made will not be in vain. America can move on into the future as one society, undivided by wealth or opportunity in time. This may, seem, may be seen as a moment that America truly fulfilled its reputation as a land where anyone can make it to greatness. Political power, stability, shift in favor of the NPP, or poverty will begin to slowly improve. Yeah, I'm sorry, but, like, we've destroyed, like, a massive chunk of the society here. So, like, I don't know, man. An end to poverty. Like, I'll be honest, like, like, like again, like this. It doesn't make it, why well, there's none of this. Okay, this is something I've got to, I've got to, I'm not feeling good about this with the devs. They stick down AAA. The Oval Office looks like a funeral parlor. Men and women in formal office apparel, standing around the resolute desk like it's the coffin of a loved one. Michael Harrington isn't dead, but his face is ashen, his eyes cast downward. He's felt this way before when he identified that Bowery alcoholic from the Catholic worker shelter in the city morgue. We saw a line of migrant farm workers in Stockton trudging off to work auctions at five in the morning. The feeling that would only be a horror be permitted, but also be repeated. It made worse every time and never loses its painfulness as it weighs on your soul. The Supreme Court struck down the AAA this morning. Maybe the law never had a chance, or maybe it was just so bad luck. The impact is the same as so a stab in the gut for all those who want to see an America made. If not right, then better. Tomorrow, we'll all set to work, trying their darnest to make it better anyway. At the moment, though, all, all anyone can think is, God, this sucks. Don't more organize. This is... That, this. Out of everything we've done, so especially Social Security and healthcare, we get this crap thrown at us? I'm sorry, but this pisses me off. The devs, wh why? Why did they do this? Like, oh, you did everything. You got support even at the very end. Like, come on. That's BS. Everyone knows that's BS. Holy crap. And there's literally nothing else we could do. Every single time I've chosen a more liberal judge. Every single time. This is BS. Don't give me this crap. That is crap. That is absolute crap. <laughs> I'm sorry, but no. No, I'm not tolerating that. Are you kidding me? We even went down from revolutionary to radical. <sighs> I'm sorry, guys. I tried my best, but like... It's 100% on the devs for that one. That is 100% on the devs. I am disappointed. I am extremely disappointed. Everything we did... <laughs> to get that? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Do you know how much crap you would get for trying to get Social Security passed and healthcare? Especially healthcare? Establishing Medicare and stuff? And... <sighs> Man. I swear. I really question the devs sometimes. I really question them. But subsidize the Italians. Well, it may seem scandalous. Even traders to consider supplying Italy with funds. The OFN is left with no other choice. The Italian economy is on the verge of total collapse. Without foreign aid, all the nations that rely upon Italian oil interests will be brought down with them. As such, every nation must pitch in something, be it hard currency or soft. Anything to keep the Italians from falling further into the abyss of economic depression. The deliberations of the Naples Conference have made it clear Italy needs help, and the OFN needs to supply that help. Funding will be relatively inconsequential at first, but as time goes on, it's a near certainty that Italians will need more money to save themselves, and the U.S. of America will have to provide that money. If the Italians go down, they may well bring the entire free world down with them. So I, I'll be honest, I might just go back and, like, I might use console commands. You know what? I might, I don't know what they are, but this is crap. That is 100% crap to all of us who went this entire way. Do get more liberal judges the entire time. 
I'm sorry, I'm pissed off. I am 100% pissed off out of everything. There's literally nothing you can do. There's literally nothing you can do. What are we supposed to do? Nothing. The dads are like, no, no, screw you. I mean, Harrington's got to get at least slightly reworked. Or at least something. Get us something here. Because there's not enough de dead uh, Supreme Court justices for us to get that. You know, we did everything mostly right. Mostly right. Not everything. But mostly everything right. Just because we had to use console commands to get more support as RFK earlier. And that's it. That's literally all we've done to get more support. But to get treated like that, at the end, we're going pretty radical. Just because of some stupid judge... I'm sorry, that's not good. Not, no, no, I'm sorry, no. But we're going to bail E and I. Or the Internationale Edoro Cabori, as a premier Italian supplier of oil to much of the Western world, or at least it was, with the majority of the Middle East either exploding into anti Italian civil wars or joining the OPEC and ceasing all oil exports. E and I's stock has crashed, and the company's become the epicenter for what is shaping up to be one of the greatest market crashes in the past two decades. At this point, for all intents and purposes, E and I is broke, and they plan to file for bankruptcy very soon. If they do so, however, it'll be only make the situation worse. In order to prevent a further collapse of the global markets, E and I cannot be allowed to go bankrupt. As the Italian government is already in deep pit of money troubles, the United States government must be the one to bail out E and I and show the world that everything is going to be alright. Bolster their forces. In most of the Middle East, Italians are down, but not out. At this very moment, thousands of Italian soldiers and Middle Eastern allies battle against the forces of OPEC and Baatist insurrectionists. However, it's a losing battle. Their supplies are too few, the enemy is too numerous. It is only a matter of time before the Italians are pushed out of the Middle East entirely as such. The US, as well as the OFN in general, must provide a military assistance of some kind. No matter how dire the situation becomes, however, American troops cannot be openly sent to enforce the will of the hegemonic, fascist Italian Empire, and so support is limited. We can only send support in the form of small arms, equipment, military attaches, and so on. Get treated like that at the end, after we did all that, just for the devs to say no. Just, yeah, you know, just, just, just because we can. Should have packed the court then. So there's literally no point doing this now, which is disappointing. I mean, I'm sorry, but this is one of the most disappointing things I've seen in TNO. It really is. Just because one guy on the court says something here. Says, just because they say they're conservative or liberal doesn't mean they actually are. So, like... <sighs> Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Schwarzkopf's plan. Colo Colonel Norman Schwarzkopf is the premier of mil American military attaché to the Italians in the Middle East, a veteran of both South Africa and in in Indonesia. The man has seen his fair share of modern war and understands how to fight one effectively. Thus, he has devised a plan for the Italians to follow, which entails heavy concentrations of troops to strike deep into the deserts of Arabia and Egypt, outmaneuvering and enveloping hostile forces in addition. As the population may be less cordial with the occupying Italians, Schwarzkopf has envisioned a thorough organization of garrisons and patrols to keep down any insurrection that may arise at the moment. Schwarzkopf's plan is simply a breakdown of major ob objectives of the offensive, details of yet to be worked out, so the colonel will likely require the aid of both Italian and American militaries to truly formulate a comprehensive strategy. That would be more billions of dollars, huh? Yeah, 2.7 billion, huh? Yeah, just because you improve the economy means we have even more of a deficit. Oh, baby. Oh, boy. But the Italian desk... We have dispatched William Colby to Rome in the guise of a State Department clerk. The old fox has decades of experience as a spy. If anyone can root out the root or rot in Italian society, it's him. Let us ensure he has the resources he needs to pa pass on to the gov Italian government. What information he can uncover about the extremist groups rocking the nation. And if any of that information and funding should happen to make its way to anti-fascist and pro-American parties in such a way that it benefits them in elections, well, they, as they say, when in Rome, do as the Romans. Uh, someone also asked if I could play as Barry Goldwater. I do plan on playing him sometime, as long as there's not a lot of BS in that campaign as well. Like... 100%. So, uh, we'll see. Unite the party because they suck. At least Far Right does for this campaign. Someone also recommends I actually play as Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, uh, Senior, of course, Bill Clinton, and George W. Bush. Well, there's a sub mod for Tino. I forget what it is called. Is it? Yeah, I can't remember what it's called, but there's a mod that will try to get a lot of those presidents available to have. So, we'll see. We'll get there eventually, but we'll see. We'll definitely, 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 definitely see. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure, like, every single time, I've elected a liberal judge. I don't think I've ever selected a conservative judge. Every single time. Every single flipping time. I tried my best, guys, but 
It's all 100% on the devs. Taking back their empire. The US of A and the Italian Empire have not had the most stable or cordial relationship of the past, but now cooperation is needed. Should the Italians fail, they shall bring the entire of the free world down with them. Oil prices will soar, the market will collapse, and history will repeat itself. This supposed eventuality cannot be allowed to happen, as so the US must stand fully and openly behind Italy and her empire going forward. The people in the press may raise a fuss over helping a former enemy, but without the jet black goal that they provide, America will be brought to its knees. And then I'll probably go do cool the lead. Colby's requested additional resources to cool the heated domestic situation in Italy. He believes focusing solely on the fascist underground will fail to resolve the current instability in our national interest. Should Italy fall to a truly radicalized left-wing regime or descend into total anarchy, chances of a German intervention is high. As such, he wants resources to infiltrate the more violent communist groups, extremist student organizations, and even radical feminist associations. In addition, he wants funding for the organization of a stay behind network of democratic politicians and military brass in the event of a German invasion or radical coup attempt. Even if these networks should prove unable to restore the government or democratic government, they can make life sour for the new regime. Let us give him what he needs. But if you enjoyed the video, despite my ramblings and, and you know, ramblings and more ramblings, please consider leaving a like. It does help me out. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow after I've cooled off from being disappointed with the developers. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.